It's better over here. Now at T-Mobile, get four 5G phones on us and four lines for $25 a line per month when you switch with eligible trade-ins. All on America's largest 5G network. Minimum of four lines for $25 per line per month with auto-pay discount using debit or bank account. $5 more per line without auto-pay, plus taxes and fees and $10 device connection charge. Phones via 24 monthly bill credits for well-qualified customers. Contact us before canceling entire account to continue bill credits or credit stop and balance on required finance agreement due. Bill credits end if you pay off devices early. See T-Mobile.com. Not really. You? Oh, you know, uh, disappointed. In? Last night I'm sitting there ready for the 49ers and Jets, ready to see if... My guy, Christian McCaffrey, can outduel Virgil's guy, Brees Hall. And, uh, what, an hour and a half, two hours before game time, uh, McCaffrey listed as unavailable. It's too bad. And probably couldn't have picked up the Mason kid who ended up playing and no, playing very pick well. Because you would have had to drop somebody, and the only person you could have dropped was Christian McCaffrey. Right. So that wasn't... There, that's a, a fallacy in the whole uh, setup, isn't it? Well, it's it's a little troubling when you find out just before the game and you can't really do anything about it. I don't think that's quite fair, but what are you going to do? Well, Virgil didn't call and say, I'll give you the win, like I would have. You would have? Of course I would have. Well, maybe I you should have gotten... Jordan Mason, 147 yards, 28 carries. How does that happen? I mean, they must have really believed in that guy. First of all, to put McCaffrey on the inactive list that uh, that uh, soon before the game. Well, did you hear Jordan Mason after the game said he knew Friday he wasn't he was going to start? Well, why the, didn't they tell me? I don't know. I don't know why they didn't inform fantasy owners and gamblers. And isn't that illegal? It's not good. I don't know the legality of it, but yeah, to uh, kind of withhold or. Uh, wouldn't you be upset if you were the Jets? The injury report? No, I wouldn't be upset if I were if I were the Jets. Uh, I'd be upset if I was a gambler. If I, you know, because you went, you got to lay down. that money down. Although you, the 49ers covered, but you had a downgrade. So why would the Jets be upset? You get Jordan Mason or whatever the kid's name is instead of uh, Christian McCaffrey, who well, probably in hindsight. Well, he would have had some catches. He probably would have ended Mason up with, had a catch or two. He probably would have ended up with something similar. I don't know. Maybe. Probably. Uh, but that was an impressive performance by the 49ers. Uh, and if you're thinking, you know, they didn't they didn't have Ayuk either. Uh, they had him. He just didn't. Didn't play. Did he play? Yes. Oh, yeah. He got two balls. But he was uh, – I thought he wasn't going to play. Mm, he played. I thought he was out. Absolutely not. He signed a week or, week or so He ago. wasn't ready to play. Well, he probably wasn't we ready say to that? play. And so he's not nearly at full speed. And, and Peyton Manning went off on the poor kid, Ayuk, when he dropped a touchdown. I was going to say dropped a touchdown in the end zone. But uh, that's where touchdowns happen, so I'm not going to say that. He dropped a, a ball in the end zone. He dropped a touchdown. Well, that's too bad. And Peyton Manning, good for Peyton Manning. I guess. That's what he's paid to do, right? It's a little over the top. Who's but a better broadcaster, of... Peyton Manning or Tom Brady? Peyton Manning. But let's not let's not completely give up on Brady. We're I thought he was up. better in the second half. He just needs to find himself, man. That's hard. First of all, you go into this, your first game ever, first real game ever, all the buildup, you're Tom Brady, Everybody's hoping you fail, right? I don't think so. Most people. Greg Olson, maybe, but I think a lot of people were. A lot of people wanted Tom to fail. Hmm, I don't know about that. I'm, I'm not a big Tom Brady guy at all, but I don't think I was wanting nah, him to you, fail. You, you're the first guy to text me. I just turned in. Is Brady this bad? That's well, he kinda, was bad. That's the kind of stuff I don't need on a Sunday. Uh, I like Tom Brady. Fine. There's nothing wrong with liking Tom Brady. And I think he'll settle in and be good at this. You think? I mean, he's never showed a personality one day of his life. Uh, so we just think that's going to come out now? I thought he showed some personality. Some. In the second half. Little. I thought he did better. I did, It's not like I hung with the game. No, it was a but terrible game. But I tuned game. back and forth. And, and the little snippets I got in the second half were a little more encouraging. Good. Yeah, I'm sure they talked to him at halftime. 
Well, they should uh, continue talking to him. Right. And who's his broadcast partner? You would ask me that. What's that guy's name? Kevin Burkhart. I'm sure Kevin Burkhart had a moment with him. Said, come on, Tom. Yeah, I'm sure uh, if he's had a lot of conversations with a lot of people. Loosen up. Don't un- undo your thing on the microphone. Well, I, you, you, I can hear everything you're doing. I mean, tough. I, that's completely unprofessional. I need some water. To unscrew your water bottle. Well, unscrew it before the show starts. I didn't know it was going to be that difficult. I thought I could just, with one hand, kind of twist it off, but they had it on there pretty good. Well, of course we do here at League 42. Why wouldn't you? We buy the best water, Ozarka. Is that the best? Proudly Texan since 1905. Can you believe that? Why, would, what, why did they think to bottle water in 1905? I'm, I'm sure they bottled water since 1905. At least. Right? Uh, here's what we have for you, our listeners, on the show today. It's been a while. Valhe Gregorian will join us from the Kansas City Star. Remember that time Jesse Newell said, you guys get Valhe on the show? He doesn't do any radio. Now, I took that as a badge of honor, uh, but Valhe was kind of on a special assignment for the summer working on some bigger projects for the Star. And uh, he's back in the sports world now. We got Valhe on at uh, 225. At 245, now this one just fell into our laps. Former Wichita State basketball guard Terrence Flowers from the 90s played for Scott Thompson, that era. I think he of, played for Smithson, too, for a year, maybe. 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 Uh, 95 96 team, I'm pretty he sure. He was a recruit of Scott Thompson. He was. And uh, came out of the great city of Chicago. And out of nowhere, Terrence uh, ran into one of our ad people yesterday when she was out making a call, and they got to talking about Odyssey. And uh, I don't know how uh, the conversation turned to me, but it was told to Terrence that I was working at Odyssey, had a radio show, and he told Janice uh, to make sure that I called him. Said he'd been trying to reach out to me for four months. Really? This is the first I've heard of it. You don't seem to be that hard to get a hold of. I wonder what the, the hang-up was. Um, so we're going to talk to Terrence Flowers. He's got a book out, uh, and he it wants sure to is. promote that a little bit. And he's back in Wichita, and I am highly intrigued to talk to Terrence Flowers, a former Shocker basketball player, coming up at 245. And uh, later in the show today at 325, uh, we'll visit, uh, we'll have a game. Jeff has a game for us. Sure. As he does every Tuesday. I wanted to mention, uh, before we get any deeper into the show, I wanted to uh, send out our best to former Wichita East Bueller basketball coach Don Cameron. He and his wife were hit uh, by a drunk driver recently, I believe over the weekend, his wife lost her life in that accident. I, uh, I understand. I've been told that Don is on the uh, path to recovery and should be okay, but uh, just a terrible thing. And uh, Don, of course, coached at Wichita East. Back in, uh, back in the day, had Mark Hutton. Remember Mark Hutton? I know the name. Mark Hutton went to Auburn and uh, was tremendous city leaguer. And I was reminded of this. I actually heard about this uh, on Sunday, I believe. I got a call uh, earlier today from our friend Dale Faber, who reminded me about this. And uh, so I wanted to pass along our uh, our uh, our thoughts to uh, Don Cameron, who I one of the friendliest coaches I've ever been around. Um, while I was talking to Faber, he mentioned that he had heard that we had discussed City League coaches the other day. Yes. And that uh, you, what, what was your... I don't know. What were you saying? I don't remember. I think it might have been you that was saying it. I think you brought his name up. Is Dale yeah. Faber one of those historic coaches? So you put me in a tough And you spot. said absolutely not. Well, I didn't say absolutely that, not. You said Dale Faber of all people? I think we No, I didn't exactly. say that. And you're just trying to get me in more hot water. So he said, I heard something about uh, you and Jeff talking about 
I've had city league basketball coaches, and I said, oh, "That damn Jeff." Are you the one that told him? No. Uh, so I, what I told Dale Faber, of course, who had a good run at Bishop Carroll, and he's back as their boys' and basketball and coach friends. now. He had a very good run. They were they were really good, but they never won a city league championship. They never won a state championship. Sure. And uh, it was my belief, my assertion on our show when it, when this topic came up, who are the city league basketball coaching legends that Dale Faber would not get to that level of legend. So I was forced to break that to him today. said, Dale, listen, I, I, I think you're fantastic. Uh, I love you. But, uh, no, I can't, I can't put you in that category uh, without a state championship or two. Has every city league school won a state championship in basketball? Uh, I believe so. West has, North has, Southeast has, Heights has, Capon has, East Bishop Carroll has. has. I think they have they right? have. recently. They have. Northwest has. South. South obviously. has and North has. Yeah, well, you might have said some of those twice, but I don't, I don't think, think I did. I don't think there's any East of them. East has. Yeah, they all have. That's, they all, they've all won That's kind of amazing. Title. I bet that's the only league in the state that can make that. Claim. Might be. Well, they've all been around a long time. I get it. And the players a lot of schools have been around a long time. The players who uh, come through here are amazing. You think you, know? the, you think the Heart of America League hasn't been around a long time? I don't know. Time? I don't know. I don't know about how you think uh, the Eastern Kansas League hasn't been around a long time. Maybe they've all won state titles for all I know. Check. I don't know. I doubt there's any other league where each school has won what a boys basketball. What about the Kansas City Kansas League? Is that a league? Used to be. I don't know. Has like Harmon? Schlegel's won. Has Harmon won? I don't think Harmon's won, but Wyandotte certainly has. Turner, I'm not sure. Doubtful. Ward, Un- uh, may have. Unlikely. Well, don't 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 sell Ward short. I would never. I mean, Kansas City Ward uh, has had some moments. I'll take your word for it. I don't remember any of those moments. Uh, you can't really do research on that. It would take forever, you but know, uh, I'm gonna have to look that up. The, the athlete that that comes to mind, Kansas City, Washington was good. I don't think they ever won a state title. But the athlete that comes to mind when I think about Kansas City Ward High School is Neil Allen. Okay. Who was traded by the Mets to the Cardinals for Keith Hernandez. And he went to Bishop Ward High he School. He went to Bishop Ward High School. Impressive. But that was one of the worst trades we ever made. Not a good one. My goodness. Uh, tough Keith Hernandez, by the way. I'm gonna say he should be in the Hall of Fame. Well, I don't have my uh, I don't have my ability to look at things. I, I thought about bringing my laptop out here, but when I do that, when I do have the ability to look at things, I completely overwhelm you with knowledge. So this is me kind of. I did uh, Jeff's baseball Hall of Fame, and I'm pretty sure he was in it. Just went by feel. Just got a Hall of Fame. Feel? Yes or no? Yes or no? To every Lou Brock a Hall of Famer? I think I put yeah. He put I put him in. Well, you better. He had 3,000 hits. And? Nothing. Almost That's about it. Almost 1,000 stolen bases. I'm pretty sure I put and him in. And? World Series hero. He had, and? He had 305 and 20 at-bats. And? What? Keep going. There's not much Keep left. Keep talking about Lou Brock. He's fine. 1,600-plus runs. Um, Good player. And one of my all-time favorites. In fact, my second favorite Cardinal. Of all time. Really? Behind Gibby. Who's number th- He's ahead of Ozzie Smith. Ozzie's in there. But you got to remember, I go back to the, these are the, yeah, but Ozzie, these are the developing. How could you like Ozzie, Lou Brock more than you like Ozzie? But Ozzie's do you team? understand that this is what hit me when I was just in my formative years? I was, I was, I was, I was taken aback by the greatness that I'd never seen before. Great. In, these, in Gibson. And Brock. But it's not like you got to watch them play every day. I got to listen to them play almost every day. Well, that's a little different than watching them. Well, not when you're listening to Harry Carey and Jack Buck. You understand how that is? Ozzie, you could see it. You could see it right in front no, of your I eyes. I love Ozzie Smith. He might. Yeah, you should. 
He might be my favorite player of all time. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Let's get Ozzie Smith on this show. <laughs> I tried to look him up. He's not really out there. I'm gonna make uh, me. I'm gonna make that effort. I've made the effort for a big name. We'll talk more about it off the air. Well, you not only made an effort, you promised <laughs> that he'd be on the show, and I hope a lot of people have forgotten about that, but I have not. Well, you want to hear the uh, the exchange? I do, yes, actually. All right, why not? Because uh, Ray Ritter's a friend of mine. What's and, he gonna do? Huh? He's not gonna. He's not gonna be upset. Uh, so uh, here's what I sent. Hey, Ray, is it crazy to ask about the possibility of getting Steph Curry to come on our show? If it is, please tell me. You know, I, w I don't want to be barking up the wrong tree. You understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. Here's what he said. Not crazy to ask. He'd probably do it for me. I won't see him until camp starts October 1, but happy to see if I can get him on for 15 minutes. If any superstars would do it, it would be him. I'll put him on my list. Hmm. Good job, Ray. How about me? Yeah, what'd you do? what I do? You just asked. You he's wouldn't one, ask. He's the one doing the work. You wouldn't ask. Ray Ritter doesn't know me as well as he knows He doesn't know. You. Say, do that sentence over again. Ray Ritter doesn't know me as well. <laughs> I know what you're going to try to do. one more time. Ray Ritter does not know me as well no. as he knows you. He doesn't know you. I would but, say he knows me. Well, he might. He knows Bob and Jeff. Right. He I'm figures in this, there's some Jeff along here. But, you know, I mean, uh, he probably thinks it's me. He may. He's a smart guy. He may have picked up on it. Everybody loves him, it seems like. Ray Ritter or Steph? Ray Ritter. Well, he's a wonderful guy. If we had, of course, our connection to Ray Ritter is his connection to Wichita. He grew up here, spent part of his childhood uh, here in Wichita, lived in, I believe, Goddard, and uh, went to Northwest High School for a little bit. Yeah, that's uh, he's off to or lived in Northwest Wichita and went to Goddard. One of the and and made a name for himself out in the out in the world. Yeah, this is now the uh, esteemed media relations director for the Golden State yeah, Warriors. absolutely everyone speaks highly of Well, everyone, including your guy, Jim Rohn. Not, I mean, everybody. Who else? I don't know. Every time I've heard Raymond Ritter's name, it's how good, good at his job he is. Well, I love the kid. I love the kid. Did I, you see Dana O'Neill, who's college basketball writer forever? Uh, got to know her a little bit. Uh, on the NCAA tournament trail throughout the years. She took a job in strategic communications at Villanova. Really? Following the same path as our Paul Sullentrop, although she got a big title out of it. Senior athletic, senior assistant athletic director. Or wow. Something. Uh, That's Paul's, Paul's not just, senior Paul's assistant just athletic? A guy, it, I think Paul's title is, uh, what's he do? Why did I lash out Paul does Paul? a lot of stuff. Of course he does. I, I, I could, listen, nobody has more respect for Paul Sullentrop than me. And that's an office of strategic communications that has turned me down. For what? I applied for a job there, and I even had an interview. Really? Yeah. You got turned down? I also down? had an interview in the admissions department. Did not get that job either. Wow. What do you, well, they probably found out about your academic record. That could be. At Wichita State. Probably shouldn't make that so accessible. I'll look into it. All right. That. All they got to do is go to a file. Uh, 12 years to finish. Nope. That's about eight and a half. Joined on the hotline, Vahe Gregorian from the Kansas City Star, their columnist. Vahe, welcome. How are you today? I'm delighted to be with you guys is how I am. How are you guys doing? We're doing oh, well. You know, we had, uh, we have Jesse Newell on quite a bit to talk about the Chiefs. And one of the times we had him on, we mentioned that we had Vahe Gregorian as a semi-regular guest here. And, his reaction was interesting. It was like, wait a minute, what? Vahe comes on your show? He doesn't come on any show. So I felt a little bit, a little swagger since then. Well, I, I think you might lose some swagger when, when you realize it's really just because nobody else asks me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, like I, I don't want to, I don't, 
I don't want to make it sound like I'm not discriminating. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so, but Jesse probably doesn't know that we go back 35 years or so. Maybe not. He's probably not aware of that. Uh, so before we uh, get rolling, and Jeff has a question for you, we mentioned uh, as we were going to break, this is an incredible time for Kansas City sports and the scene, the sports scene in Kansas City. You've got the Royals look like they're going to make the playoffs, still chasing Cleveland for the division title. you got the Chiefs uh, chasing a third consecutive Super Bowl. You have the potential American League MVP in Bobby Wood Jr. You have a two-time NFL MVP in Patrick Mahomes. You've got Travis Kelsey. You've got Taylor Swift. Uh, the, the list goes on and on. Did you ever imagine, did Kansas Cityans ever imagine anything quite like this? Well, listen, I, I think the, the key word there is imagine because really all they could have done was imagine for so long. Here's, here's a little fun fact for you. Maybe you guys know this, but only once, only once have the Chiefs and Royals been in the playoffs in the same calendar year, ever. And that was, wow. that was 2015. And so think about what that says compared to what this, you know, the sort of the, the implication of all you've just said means. Um, it, it's pretty remarkable. And when you add in a couple little things like, um, I shouldn't say little things, but a couple other things like, you know, this is the first year of the world's first women's professional soccer stadium or any pro, pro venue. Uh, right here in Kansas City, and they they've got a chance at a championship. And um, you think about all three of the the local ish major college football programs being in the top twenty five and um, to start the season. And, and so all that is pretty amazing. And the World Cup coming. So it's it seems to me it's almost impossible to say that there's ever been a better time in Kansas City sports history. I, I think. You can make that case just based on the Chiefs alone. But when you add everything else in, it's uh, it's pretty remarkable. And one last side thought on that is that I got here in 2013. At that point, the Royals hadn't been in the postseason in 28 years. The Chiefs hadn't won a postseason game in two decades. And I don't think I even realized that when I got here. I'm like, oh, yeah, this has been pretty tough. And uh, I, I just kind of – blundered into it at the right time because it's it's a pretty fertile time to be covering Kansas City sports. I'm probably uh, making too much of, of the series between the, the Yankees and the Royals, and last night it was Salvador Perez and it was Austin Wells uh, doing most of the damage, but uh, are we going to get a, a clear-cut MVP out of this series? Will one of these guys uh, take the reins? Do you think it's, it's judges to lose? Do you think it's wits to lose? How do you uh, stack up those two candidates, and what, and what might this uh, short series in the Bronx tell us? Well, it's interesting. I think you're right that it's, it really is just a snapshot, but, but also there's a combination of um, recency bias and, you know, having these guys head-to-head in the media capital of the world. And so all those things, I think, will be magnified. Um, I guess I would say that it, it seems to me it's probably Aaron Judge's to lose, but that, it, that doesn't mean he can't lose it. Um, you know, does Bobby Witt need to just, uh, categorically outperform him next two days to have that, you know, kind of spark for his campaign. Maybe wouldn't hurt. Um, I think the interesting question that always looms over this to me, and maybe uh, a better governing body has decided this answer than, than, than whatever is in my adult mind, but it strikes me that we need to remember there are two, there are two different questions. Sometimes they're the same answer, but two different questions about most valuable versus best, right? And I think it, it, you can make the case very well for either of them as the best, but I, I think Bobby Witt's case is, a, is, you know, a notch better as most valuable, what it means to the team. You know, a team that is on trajectory to have the greatest turnaround in baseball history, um, it, it might not happen that way, but it's, it's, it's on trajectory. It's already won whatever it is, 24 more games than last year, 23. So, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot to that part of the equation. Um, 
I'm reminded of what a NCAA tournament committee director and former accountant once said about breaking down numbers, that if you torture the numbers long enough, you can get them to confess to anything. So I think you can, you can make your cases with numbers either way. Um, but if you make the case based on impact on a team, seems to me Bobby Witt's got a little bit of an edge. Bahe Gregorian, our guest, interesting because both are on a little bit of a downturn right now. Aaron Judge has not homered in 13 games, which is, given the fact he has 51, that's pretty remarkable. And uh, Bobby Wood Jr. just eight for his last 40. So one of those guys needs to get hot, and if one does and the other doesn't, that could be it. Uh, let's talk about the Chiefs, Fahey, for a little bit. Uh, they opened in grand form at home against Baltimore the other night. Uh, high expectations. They added Xavier Worthy to this roster, uh, which we'll look back on in 15 years, in my opinion, and go, uh, my goodness, how in the world did he drop that far? Uh, this looks like an offensive group that could be really, really good. Do you agree? I do agree, and I think a couple interesting things about this. Like, obviously, that game could have gone the other way. I mean, I don't. I literally don't remember ever seeing a closer final play. I mean, we've seen plays that were really close, difference makers, but on a final play, pretty tough to find that. So that game could have gone the other way, um, and I think it would have would have uh, been a little more decisive if if not for just a couple little things that each team could say that. But I, I noticed, for instance, the Chiefs were had a chance to really administer a knockout blow. It was late third quarter, early fourth quarter, third and five, and they've got P. Ryan on the left, and it just doesn't quite connect. I couldn't tell you if Patrick short-armed it or if he slightly overthrew it or P. Ryan just didn't catch it. That might have been a touchdown, but it certainly was going to be a first down, and I thought that could have ended the game. And I bring that up because they just got him. And I think he's going to be a real asset to the team. Bear in mind, they played without Hollywood Brown, and yet they were able to stretch the field and expand sort of their attack just because of Xavier Worthy in ways that we didn't really see last year. And to say nothing to the fact that Xavier Worthy scored two touchdowns basically untouched. Um, and that it, So I just feel like there's a dimension to this offense that's been added and it will continue to expand. And I think it's pretty exciting offensively. And look, I, you know, the defense had had you know some glitches. It, it was odd that that first Ravens drive became a touchdown drive, despite whatever it was three or four, um, three or four penalties for the illegal formation. But the defense made four or five plays that also were the game-winning plays. So I think the defense is going to be, I think, pretty good. Just you know, a little bit of a new team, new identity concept where. Even if the changes are subtle, they've still got to deal with some losses that, that have to be made up for, like, you know, Legereus Sneed. Um, but I, I think you could feel pretty good about that win, I guess, is the shorter-winded way of saying that. And it, it, it sure to me bodes well to start the season that way. And you can certainly see room for plenty of improvement, but also a baseline there that, that's pretty exciting. I wanted to ask you, too, about Xavier Worthy, and it's it's like a bigger example. We've seen it, it seems like, a lot. What do the Chiefs know about roster building that, that other teams don't? It's not like this guy was just a sprinter and they're bringing him in on potential. He had 1,000 yards receiving for Texas, of all teams, last year, and he gets that first touch into the end zone. It's like, oh, they have Tyree Kill again. They're, they'll be unstoppable. How, how did he fall that far? Well, I, I, I guess I, I, I don't know the answer to that, I, I, but, I, but I guess I'd put it this way, that it, it strikes me that I think some people thought he was a little outsized, he was going to get pushed around, and, you know, they, they saw those aspects to it. The Chiefs were actually really worried they had no chance of him when, um, when he broke the combine uh, 40-yard dash record, but... For whatever reason, those other things seem to persist, and uh, you know, it, it really is a thing where no should have let the Chiefs get this guy. I mean, that should have been a more important thing than who they did get. And I know Buffalo's uh, been questioned about this a little bit. So, I, I I just think they identify a guy that fits for them, 
And I think that's happened a few times. They're willing to roll the dice a little bit. You know, if you recall, when they got Tyreek Hill, um, they were, you know, much criticized, especially here for doing that because of the domestic violence passed. And, um, and, and yet they, they built him into a, a, an incredible player. And that's how they've kind of done it. They have found guys that were, for one reason or another, not, not, on everybody else's boards, whether it's size or uh, perceived character issues or things like that, and and been able to mold them to Andy's system. We're uh, with Vahe Gregorian. A few more minutes left. Last question for you, Vahe. I wanted to uh, get your thoughts. KU and K-State both have really interesting games, as they did last weekend. KU got uh, blemished by Illinois. Uh, But I wanted to ask you about Mizzou because – Man, that program has taken off. You were their beat writer for a long time when you were at the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Uh, you saw the trials and tribulations. Uh, are you surprised that they've gotten this good uh, under Eli Drinkwitz, and how sustainable is it? How big of a factor do you think they can be in the SEC? Well, look, that's that's the essence of the question for them right now is how sustainable is this? It's at, last year was an incredible season for them because for a lot of reasons, but, but not the least of which was I thought Eli Drinkwitz went into it very much on the fence about whether he's going to be able to keep his job. He was sub 500. Um, the thing that's been evident all along is he's very charismatic, great recruiter, and he strikes me as a guy who – is built for the times in terms of the transfer portal and NIL and all these all these things that are, you know, keeping the game in flux. He seems like a guy who knows how to roll with it. Um, and I I think it looks to me like they've got some staying power because really nobody's really doubted the recruiting. Now, you say staying power in the SEC, it, it's not hard to see a couple injuries and a couple losses and things, you know, go the other way. But this season, to me, is really important because it's got to, they need this to demonstrate that it wasn't just a one-hit wonder last year. And that means also with the expanded college football playoff, they've got a chance, I think, pretty decent chance to be, to be in that. So this is a pivotal season that way. And as, as you guys know, as we all know, success begets success. I mean, once you start showing you can be in that sort of tier, then – it, I don't want to say ever becomes easy, but it certainly becomes easier to recruit. Uh, you've got way more to sell, and um, it, it, that could really bode well for Missouri. So it's it's a pretty darn interesting season for them. I do think they they uh, need to make sure they get off to the start they're supposed to and win these first four games at home just because you don't want an early stumble to cascade into something else, and I, I think they're – They're better than most of the teams on the schedule, but not all of them. All right, Vahe. Well, it's a pretty uh, suddenly a pretty interesting game they've got this weekend against number 24 Boston College, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, We always appreciate your time. Thank you so much, and uh, we'll get with you soon, okay? Good luck in the rest of those radio interviews you're doing. Yeah, great to be with you guys. (laughs) Tell Jesse Jesse I was was here. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, Vahe. All right, guys. All right. There's a Vahe Gregorian from the Kansas City Star. It's better over here. AT&T customers, switching to T-Mobile has never been easier. We'll pay off your existing phone and give you a new one free, all on America's largest 5G network. Visit T-Mobile.com slash carrier freedom to switch today. Pay off up to $650 via virtual prepaid MasterCard in 15 days. Free phone up to $830 via 24 monthly bill credits plus tax. Qualifying port and trade in service on Go 5G next and credit required. Contact us before canceling entire account to continue bill credits or credit stop and balance and required finance agreement is due. Here is someone I'm not sure I expected to ever hear from again, but I've had the good fortune of hearing from him, and he heard from me. Terrence Flowers, Wichita State Guard back in the 90s from 93 to 96 under Scott Thompson, back in town, uh, has a book out. Terrence, hello, welcome. Thank you for having me. How you doing, Bob? Yes, this is crazy. This is just crazy, but I'm I'm <laughs> thrilled that we've uh, reconnected. You've been in Wichita, you told me this morning, for a few months. 
Tell us about uh, what you're doing, where you've been. You've got a big story. Uh, you've written it in a book called Corporate G. It's kind of a three-parter. So we'll get into that in a minute. But tell us what you're doing at the moment. Well, at the moment, I'm doing some personal training here in Wichita. And, uh, you know, just, just building uh, relationships with certain people uh, that's trying to do positive and uh, move and evolve with me as well. How often do you get back here, Terrence? And, and when you're not here, where else do you go? Well, back to Chicago and Florida. You know, my kids, I got two kids. My daughter, uh, Layla Marie Flowers, she's 15. My son, Amari Javon Flowers, he's 15. Uh, they live in Florida, so I travel back and forth to see them. And that's the majority of my time, making sure uh, that my, my children have uh, the proper guidance that they need. We're uh, talking with former Shocker guard Terrence Flowers. I've done a little math here. Are you 50 now? Close. <laughs> How old are you? 49. There you go. Right there. Well, hang on to it, man. Don't don't let it turn to 50. Uh, so I'm, we're, I'm very curious about uh, your book that you've written. Uh, it's called Corporate G. It uh, kind of is based on your life, and you've had – an interesting life since you uh, played collegiately here for the Shockers. Uh, give us a little synopsis of what that life's been, uh, why you decided to write a book about it, and how cathartic maybe that was for you. Well, after, you know, evolving, you know, when you're evolving in life, it, it, it's not a number of age that it takes to be mature. So, it takes experience to do so. So my story, you know, from the time, you know, my mother passed away and, you know, moving forward with my father and, and things of that nature, uh, you know, from the story that you covered when I was in college, um, everything evolved from that. So, you know, uh, moving to Vegas after graduating from Wichita State, uh, you know, living in Vegas for 15 years and, and, uh, you know, going out to, uh, you know, L.A. and uh, playing with the Milwaukee Bucks in the Fila Summer Pro League in 1997. And uh, that experience, you know, that, you know, didn't evolve for me. So that that's where my basketball career stopped at. And then I had to move forward in life uh, from there. Yeah, so how uh, closely... Uh, is the book? Is it an autobiography? It seemed like there might be elements of fiction in it. Is it all true? Uh, because I got the little sample that that Amazon provides the first couple chapter, chapters, and there's uh, a lot of stuff in there that might shock some people. So, uh, what did you go through, especially in Las Vegas? Oh well, you know it's experience. So you know, um, you know, going into situation, you know, Las Vegas is a different story. You know, it's a different life, you know, different things go on in Las Vegas that's that's uh, allowed to go on there. So not being evolved consciously in certain things, you know, you can get involved in a, a, a mirage of things that you have no idea, uh, you know, the, the evolution of it. So if, if, if things evolve at a certain certain level where you're making money and you're trying to, you know, provide for yourself and, and things of that nature, and you're not familiar uh, with, a, with a certain um, avenue of getting money, you know, it, it, you know, it can change your life. So it's a, it's a testimony. Also, it's an urban book. So it's a story about the streets as well. So, no, all of it's not true. Um, but it is a book based on a true story, and it's a, it should be a great read, and, and it should keep people turning the pages all through the night. No doubt, you were uh, you were an interesting guy from the time from the moment you set foot on Wichita State's campus, and I'm sure before that. But that's my experience. Mm -hmm. I'd I'd like you to share a few of your memories from that time of playing at Wichita State. Uh, obviously, the team uh, struggled at times, but there were also high points. Do you keep in touch with any of those teammates? Do you regard that time in your life as being a, a critical juncture for you? Well, that time in our life was, was, 
was a great a great experience as well because you know we had to be adults at an early age uh coming here to play at Wichita State because you know there was a lot going on the coach that brought brought me here you know he transferred out you know as soon as I got here so um and that was that was uh coach Giovanni um which was the reason that I decided to come to Wichita so uh me and Jamie both decided to come here because of Giovanni so Things had took a turn right before we got here. So that was a, you know, it was a different frequency right off the back. Um, some of the memories were great, and uh, some of the memories were, you know, were not as great, you know. But overall, I was thankful to be able to come here and play at Wichita State, and, and I'm still uh, grateful to be able to come here and, and experience, you know, shocker, you know, uh, uh, life. Yeah, that those teams that you played on, I was – uh, pretty young, starting to be a teenager. I remember them very well. Uh, I remember you and you and LD Swanson in the backcourt. Uh, th- those were fun teams, even though I know the success wasn't always there. Um, what do you remember about playing with LD? Oh yeah, LD Swanson. Uh, you know, LD was uh, you know he was a leader, and uh, you know he was he was uh, put in a different position. Uh, he was really a two guard. Uh, but me and him switched positions, uh, you know, which is uh, Scott Thompson's idea, where I played the two more often than he played the one. So I had a great time with LD. Uh, we battled. Um, you know, I wish him the best. I haven't spoke to LD in a while. I would love to conversate and uh, have a conversation with him as well. But I have spoke with Ryan Hurst uh, at an alumni function, and I keep in touch with Ryan Hurst. And um, uh, Brian Ewell, you know, um, you know, ex guys that played with us. So yeah, uh, me and Ryan was conversating a week ago about the trauma that we went through when we was at Wichita State. You know, with you know guys getting kicked off the team, John Smith and you know other guys, Michael Wiggins and things of that nature, and it put a lot of pressure on us as freshmen because we really didn't have no idea about what was going on at that level. We were just, you know, we were freshmen, but, you know, we, we didn't understand it, the politics and, and everything else that came with it. So, you know, we, we were having lunch, and uh, he was explaining to me, like, hey, you know, w- once we left, he, you know, he didn't feel comfortable coming back to Wichita State, you know, because, you know, we were embarrassed, you know, because of, you know, the season and how, you know, uh, everything turned out, you know, for our team and how it broke up and, and, and we never had no camaraderie as a team and no closure. Um as a ball club. So, you know, me and him, you know, we had closure a few weeks ago and, you know, we hugged it out and, uh, you know, we talked up to this day. So that was, that was great for me and a great peace of mind for him because we were still in the same place mentally that we didn't know we was at. Well, that's awesome. I'm glad you and Ryan got to break bread and talk it out. I'd love I would love to hear from L.D. Swanson. The, those were, uh, you, of course, I was a beat writer for the Wichita Eagle for some of those teams. So uh, you guys kept me busy, no doubt about it. Uh, Terrence, it's fantastic to catch up with you. You've got a book out called Corporate G. It's available wherever you get uh, your books on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. Uh, thank you, and uh, let's, let's stay in touch, okay? I appreciate your time, Bob. All right, take care. Are you Terrence care? Flowers, of all people. How about uh, that? When I, got, uh, when I did the show yesterday, that might have been the last person I expected to be a guest today. He was one of my favorite players, number 12. Love Terrence. Boy, he was brash. That's, That's why I okay. like him. You like that? Yeah, of course. That team was something else. Interesting uh, group of guys. He went from kind of one era to another, even though it was – uh, Scott Thompson, the whole way you had the John Smith, Michael Wiggins years, and then it kind of went forward to like the Chad Elston, Ryan Hers years. Those were almost like two different programs, but some people uh, stayed in it. Big John Smith, when they recruited him out of Columbia, South Carolina, they thought they had something. They did. And it didn't quite pan out. He had the talent. Went on to VCU where he did pretty well. Uh, but with the Shockers, it never quite settled in. It's too bad. But Have you heard head. from him in the He's a Facebook decades. friend of mine, believe it or not. Uh, I think we've had him on the show. 
That one doesn't ring a bell. We had Jamie Arnold. We I don't had know Jamie about John Arnold. Smith. Don't think we've had John Smith. Uh, maybe we'll get him one of these days. Might as well try. People remember the, that era of Shocker basketball? I don't know. I do, and a lot of people, I'm sure, do that have been around for a while. Last night, you gained a game on the Royals. Sure did. Beat the White Sox. Boy, it made it more. Into the, made it harder than it should have well, been. That's Nick Sandlin. I'm not any result from Nick Sandlin. I'm not going to get too worked up over, except the fact that he's in a game and should never be. Meanwhile, the Royals lost in New York to the Yankees, ten to four. Minnesota continues a free fall. They have now let Boston, Detroit, and Seattle back into this thing. All three of those teams just three games out. Strange. Yeah, they, uh, they couldn't beat the Angels last night. That is a free fall. Losing to the Royals is, is one thing and getting swept, but then when you... They can't, they can't get out of their own way right now. And I've seen it before. I've seen it before when teams start to falter down the stretch. It's really hard to turn it back around. Can be. And uh, we thought maybe the Twins, they had the, the poor stretch at the beginning of the season had been playing relatively well since the guardians had that eight loss stretch. Uh, the Royals had a seven game losing streak, but now the, the twins, it might be their turn again. Yeah. Nobody, everybody kind of, kind of limping to the finish in that division, except Detroit who's somehow playing well. They did the right thing. They called up a bunch of young guys, the future of their franchise and said, let's see what they can do. And here we're seeing what they can do. Yeah, you get a little energy in the clubhouse, and it might work for the rest of this year. But it's hard to sustain next that. year when you have, when everyone is adjusting to you. You get your first growing pains, and we'll see how it how it plays out. I like the direction of that franchise. I've said it a million times. You scoffed at me. You've uh, chastised. I just me. don't know how they break into the top three. Every other team is a is a young team. Well, they're cl- they're very close to breaking into the top three. Yeah, not only thanks to Minnesota. Well, that, that that doesn't matter. Minnesota should be better than Minnesota has been. Detroit is coming. They have young players who are considered to be highly touted prospects. Yeah, that's what they are, prospects. Right. And I like their team. I, I'm not gonna. I'm 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 not gonna apologize for it. You should. I shouldn't. That's um, not what you told me earlier. You said I'm sorry, Jeff, but I have to. Go on and talk no, about not, the Tigers. I'm not apologizing. Meanwhile, Atlanta has now dropped behind New York and the Mets for that third wild card spot in the National League. The Mets, that guy, what's his name? Ramon Mendoza, their manager. I think it's Carlos Mendoza. Carlos Mendoza. Does that sound I think right? That's right. Uh, he's going to get votes for manager of the year in the National League. Well, he's brought him back. They made some some small moves kind of during the season and at the deadline that have sort of helped them improve. They lost uh, Jeff McNeil, though, which could be a problem or it might not be. You got him and you got Mike Schilt in San Diego and uh, you have uh, uh, the guy in Milwaukee, yeah, Milwaukee uh, Pat Murphy. Those are probably the three leading contenders for manager of the year. Who's the, who are the manager of the year candidates in the American League? Probably. Montero has to, has to be right there. He has to win it. Probably the first year uh, Astros guy. No. Royals win that. Fine. It's not Steven Vogt, I can tell you that from watching He'll it. get votes, but the, the nobody could, in the history of baseball, who's gone from 56 wins uh, to what the Royals are going to get to, probably around 90. It doesn't happen very often. But is that a managerial job? Because he was the manager last year, too. Yeah, it's a managerial job. Really? Sure it is. It's not that they went out and got better players. Well, that's part of it. The executive of the year is J.J. Piccolo. No doubt. Well, it's not going to be Chris Antonetti. No, it's not. Even though they're and in the, the first Cardinals, place. If there's an award ceremony in the National League for anything, the Cardinals shouldn't even go. If they're, if they're planning a charter flight, they should ground it. The people at the airport should go stand in front of the plane before letting the Cardinals take off to an awards show. I don't know. I don't know anything about that. You understand, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, you know, I guess. 
you're upset at your team. I've been kind of perpetually upset at my team. It's just, I don't know. Well, you need to not be as upset with your team. You're going to be in the playoffs. I get it. And might even uh, get a bye in the playoffs. Yeah, I don't know. This being upset with that irritates But they're not that good. I've told you that all year long. So why wouldn't Steven vote? Get votes because it's partly his his fault. No, that they're not that good. Uh, well, we've lost eight in a row. We just gotta. You know what well, they do very okay. well. You know what their front office does very well. Nothing. They identify pitching talent, and they make it work, and they get just enough off. They 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 can never spend big money, for the the fact that Cleveland. Now, if you want to, you're going to be perpetually disappointed. Because this is going to be the kind of season Cleveland has. No, when they can successful. find some hitting. No, they can uh, develop a case. Just develop a hitter every now and then, please. No, not if you no. want to have pitching. Oh, they, can... they don't have the money to go around. Look at Tampa. They did it pitching wise. Uh, they had enough hitting, but th- that was always about. And I'll tell you this secretly: Guardians' uh, pitching pipeline in the minor leagues. Drying up for drying you. Drying up. There's some guys that have had success, but they're mid-rotation You, a, you drafted type. a bunch of pitchers this year. Yes. They're, so they're that's t- the reason they did that, to right. uh, fortify Restock. that uh, pitching stock. I hope. Well, that's what they. That's their intent. And Travis Whether Bazana it works, stri- I don't know. Travis Bazana strikes out four times a game. Boy, J.J. Weatherholtz had a pretty good debut. I thought he'd been terrible lately. No, he really turned it on the last six or seven games. He got his OPS over 800. He got his batting average uh, over 290. And uh, he had a really good run there, the final he's in low a, though, week right? to 10 games. Yeah, he's in Palm Beach. They're going to the playoffs. It's exciting. And he, and he had a good run, and I'm excited about that kid. Cardinals uh, prospect out of the University of West Virginia. He's only got 15 strikeouts in 29 games. I don't get why Bazana is struggling with high A. I mean, what well, does that, should, what does you, that tell you? You should have uh, you should have taken Weatherholt or somebody, maybe the the Christian Moore kid who the Angels took. Weatherholt will be in the big leagues next year sometime. Uh they need to get rid of some of these clowns. And now the Cardinals have called up Segesi, which Segesi which I'm excited about, but they sent Victor Scott back to the minors. They don't know Just what they're drive, doing. They don't. They don't have a clue. Uh, I'm gonna. I, I've I've already texted some of their beat writers. You've texted. I've them? lost it. I said every Cardinals beat writer should cease and desist, desist because your reporting is causing me to hate the team. I've loved since 1963. Do you think they'll take me up on that and just say we're done for the year? You know how I told you I have the guards Twitter. Yeah, I'm not even on. I don't even do that anymore. I just had. I just had to respond to this. I have Twitter at work, but on my phone I don't have it anymore. I'm done. I'm done with that because it caused me anguish, and it's it's been easier the last few days. Here's what I've done on Twitter: I've muted or blocked but mostly muted every account that even talks about politics, no matter their persuasion. Doesn't That's matter. It's hard to do because everyone's talking politics well, all the time. Mute, 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 mute. Have you muted any of your friends? Oh, yeah. Really? I just got done, un- uh, I just got done uh, unfollowing one. You want to tell us who that is? No. Okay. Someone you have a little history with, though. Oh, yeah. A lot of history. Wow. A lot of history. Is this person going to click on your profile? Don't care. See that you no longer follow him? Maybe. And uh, break down? Not gonna, what do you mean, break down? I mean, just have, you know, a, a moment or two where <laughs> he's upset. I wouldn't give myself. How do you know it's a he? Yeah, I know you. What do you mean you know me? You don't have a lot of woman friends. <laughs> what does that mean? Do you? Women, f- and women I don't, I don't followers think on Twitter? And I don't think you'd unfollow them anyway. Of course I do. You unfollow your women friends on Twitter. I, I've un, I've uh, muted a ton of women. Friends? I don't know. No. That's a no. I know you. 
Well, women have more sense. Typically. And I, and I will say that. But not all of them. Well, no, I, not all of them, but generally speaking, uh, women have more sense. Most of the time. Not all the time. Well, no group has more or less. I don't know. Well, Who even like knows? It's like momentum. Uh, you know it when you see it? Yeah. But you can't define it? Sense. Because it's, it's not backed by any what, science? What, I can identify what's, what sense is. Sure. You know what I've been doing a lot of reading about lately? Psychic, no. psychic mediums. <laughs> Are you going to go off the deep end on us? No, because I saw that uh, this guy, Tyler Henry, who I'd never heard of, but has apparently been doing a show on E! for 10 years, uh, is going to have a live Netflix show where he's c contacting dead people and just not really... Well, I'm going to watch that. You are? Sure. Let's get to uh, our hotline. Yeah, if he if he says he can contact dead people, you know, I'll I'll that's a hook I can't resist. But you know what? He can't. Well, we'll see. But that I can't resist watching him. And no try. one can. Who we got? Here's Mark. Hey, Mark, welcome. Hey, I got a question. This is just kind of a. I mean, you were talking about different double A, single A, all that stuff. What is high? Here's the question ball? for first, Mark. Uh, let me see. You probably know a little more baseball, so I'd say it's you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. What? <laughs> Go for it. What's the question? Anyway, Jeff was just talking about he's in a high A ball. <clears throat> is there like a middle A and a low A? Or is there just no, there's a, a low and a high. Yeah, they just call it single A now and then high A. Uh, he asked me. There's a well, low. You're wrong. So I had to, <laughs> there's a low, low A and a high A. There's no low A. They just call it single A now. But... For so for our difference? purposes, the difference is uh, at the lower level, those players are normally not as advanced as those who get moved up to higher A ball. But there's only double A and triple A. There's no high double A. And then double A and triple A, right? Just uh, it's, okay. it's it is kind of weird. Level, excuse me. There's four, <laughs> four levels, levels of minor of league baseball. minor league baseball. That's right. Because I know they cut down on some of the teams and some of the all that stuff. There's not as many minor, minor league players, so I That's thought maybe correct. they'd change things up a little bit. Each of the teams has four minor league affiliated teams. And now they do have some teams uh, in Latin America and at their spring training complexes. Uh, they got some of that, but really just four four minor league teams per franchise. Well, thank you very much. I've learned something today. You bet. There Thanks, you go. Right, thank thank you. Anytime, Mark. Appreciate you. Uh, Andrew, please uh, mark that as uh, Mark asking me. That's That was so sad. A poor, baseball question. Poor Mark. Uh, I appreciate that. You do? Sure. Yeah. You did You did fine. They took out rookie ball and stuff like that. Um, I don't think you need to outwardly laugh at one of our callers. Well, I was just amused by his. Well, I think that's rude. It was just a visceral reaction. Glad to see Aaron Rodgers struggle last night. Sorry, that's just who I am. I don't like the guy. Did he struggle or was he just? He, kind he of, wasn't okay. very good. What What do you call it when you're not very good? Uh, just average. Just kind of meh. Well, isn't that struggling? I think him being meh is better than him struggling. I mean, every day on this show, you're kind of average. You feel like you struggle? No, never. Do you feel like you're struggling right now? I've never struggled. And I'm kidding. Yeah, you're really? more. Than, you're better than average. Thank you. I appreciate that. I I fully agree. Yeah. I, what would what grade would you give me? A B minus, probably. Really, a B minus. Yeah, that's in the B range, like an eighty-two. On this show. Yeah. What would you give you? Probably a a, a low A plus, like in the ninety-six <laughs> range. Oh my God, crazy. Uh, all right, Jeff has a game. We're gonna play it, and we'll give it a little uh, room. To oh breathe. man, I forgot Max wasn't here. I oh no. We were going to go back and forth. Now i got to come up with something else. Well, Max isn't here. I know. I forgot. It's a music. Well, how can you forget? I just forgot. I mean, Andrew's hit the ground running back in our studio. It's like he's been here forever. Hasn't missed a beat. I'll just, uh, it was going to be a back and forth thing, but we'll. I'll just play it with you. All right. We'll figure it out on the fly, as we often do. It's better over here. AT&T customers, switching to T-Mobile has never been easier. We'll pay off your existing phone and give you a new one free, all on America's largest 5G network. 
Visit tmobile.com slash carrier freedom to switch today. Pay off up to $650 via virtual prepaid MasterCard in 15 days. Free phone up to $830 via 24 monthly bill credits plus tax. Qualifying port and trade in service on Go 5G next and credit required. Contact us before canceling entire account to continue bill credits or credit stop and balance and required finance agreement is due. All right, Andrew, we have a game. Uh, are you ready to play the sound? Of course not. Come on. <laughs> Well, how can Max not leave that information for you? Time to play the game. Oh, well. See, everybody thought Max was here. Max, you're terrible. All right, what is the game? What we were going to do was uh, go back and forth. I was going to give you Eagles albums. You were going to give, I was going to give Max Beatles albums. Uh, and you're going to name songs off those respective albums. Why do you do this? back and forth. I think the game is running out of steam. Well, then you can start because doing Because what you're doing now is you're starting to take advantage of my memory lapse. And you're expecting me to still be able to recall things from uh, 40, 50 uh, years I ago. I can name now, every song on every Eagles album. Yeah, you won't. Will you be able to when you're 69? Absolutely. No, you won't. You'll be here's the here's my pudding. That's all you'll be doing. If you say so. What is the game? That's the game now. Well, let's go. I'm going to give you both, and you're going to have to now go back and forth. Let's go. So your Eagles album is Eagles, their debut. What uh, what Beatles album do you think you're most familiar with? I, I know a lot of them, but not. There's so many that the the Beatles will be much more difficult. They have twelve uh, than will the Eagles. All right, but you got to go back and forth. So you want to start with Eagle, and your goal is to get forty points. Once you miss one, you're done. Well, I'll miss one I'm pretty on quickly. either one. Um, the Let It Be album, Let It Be. No, we're doing Sergeant Pepper's Lonely oh. Hearts Club Band. Uh, Sergeant Pepper's. What? Lonely Hearts Club Band. Okay, now go to an Eagles song from their first album. Nightingale. Two. Next. <laughs> Beatles. Uh, Fool on the Hill. Fool on the Hill. No. <laughs> what album was that from? I don't know. It this wasn't guy, on Sgt. Pepper's Here's what you're doing. Lonely Hearts Club Let Band. Let me tell you what you're doing. You're in that part of your life now where... You feel like you can kind of make me look bad. So that's what you're going for. All right, let's go back and forth with the debut Eagles album. You said Nightingale. I don't want to play it with you. Well, we have You've to got now. them all written down. No, I don't. Now you're trying to make me look like a I fool have, again. I have only the Beatles album because as I told let me, you. Let me go. Because as I told you, I already know every Eagles song on every album that they've well, done. Well, then you're going to beat me. Do you know every Eagle South? Not song? really. I'll do my best, but I, you know, I've been, I used to. Well, I'll leave but you. The- these are things that, as you're, as you age, as you age, things start to disappear from your memory. Why can't you understand that? I still have a very good memory. I'm going to leave you all the easy ones, and let's see if we can. No, I don't want to. No. And see if we can knock them out together. No. You said Nightingale. I don't want to do it. I'll say trying. Nah. Chug all night. Train leaves here this morning. Um, take it easy. Early bird. Desperado. <laughs> On the first album? No, nah, that was second. Uh, peaceful, easy feeling. Uh, did I say take the devil? Yeah. Early bird. You already said early bird. Uh, I said I've said all of them then. Well, that Richie I, woman. Well, I don't. You said you'd leave me the easy one. I think we've named them all then. I don't know. Pretty sure. What would uh, what did uh, Bernie sing on that album? Bernie Ledden. He sang. Uh, he had another one. Early besides. bird. Train leaves here this morning. Uh, what's the next? Oh, album? most of us are sad. Right. The last most one. of us are sad. That was Randy Meisner, though. What uh, What do you have? You want to do the Desperado album next? Desperado. Uh, <laughs> Outlaw Man. Bitter Creek. Twenty one. You sure about that? Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, good grief. A uh, certain kind of fool. Yeah, that's good. Um, I think that was the one I was going to name. Out of control. 
You sure? Yes. Track three, I believe. Uh, I don't know. I, <laughs> what else? This game is uh, it. It turned. It turned out. I so don't great. like this game. On the border. On the border. My man, James Dean. Midnight Flyer. Uh. What's really? that? I got it in my brain. Well, and I, sing it. Oh, well, good day in hell. Uh, is it true? What, did I sound good there? No. No, really? You sang two words. Um, what's that other song that Henley sings? Da -da -dun -dun -dun. Track two, I know what you're you never, talking about. Uh, cry. You never cry like a lover. Yes. Uh, old 55. Journey of the Sorcerer. Mm -mm. <laughs> I'm done with this game. You're done with it? I hate it. It was going to be a fun game. But give, I just... me, uh, give me the next album. <laughs> One of These Nights. Journey of the Sorcerer. Uh, I Wish You Peace. One of These Nights. Visions. Uh, <laughs> take it to the limit. Yeah. Um, too Many Hands. Give me a hint. Uh, a Henley and Fry duet. Oh, yeah. Old 55. Well, that's on the border we just named. Give me a hint. It's a Henley and What Can You Do When Your Dreams Come True. Oh, yeah. And it's not quite like you planned. What have you done to be losing the one? Yeah. You held it so tight in your hand. Oh, my God. I, I, I had a moment there. Unbelievable. Now, what's the name of that song? After the Thrill is Gone. But wait a minute. Andrew, are you getting this on uh, on tape? <laughs> Have we named all of them on, one of, these, on one of these nights? I wonder if Andrew realized what he was getting in. He did, because he's done this show before. Yeah, he saw us live on Friday. Be the same foolish people we're being right now. Um, 869-1240 if you got a comment about my voice. <laughs> I do. What is it? What is, what's your comment? It's fine. Just fine. It's all right. What's the next uh, album? Have we named all of them off one of these yeah. nights? Too many, oh, uh, Hollywood Waltz, we didn't say. Yeah, that's a good song, Henley. Uh, Hotel California. All right. Uh, uh, Life in the Fast Lane. Victim of Love. Hotel California. The Last Resort. Well, that's uh, cheating. Why? Wasted time. Try and love again. Uh, what's that Joe Walsh song? What is it? What is it? Oh. give me a give me the 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 beat. Give me the hi melody. there. How are you? It's not. There's no melody. It's been a long time. Like we come a long way, my but we go so slow, so slow. It's hard to get that low when you're Heroes, that low. Heroes, they come and they go. Uh, this might be the highlight show. Behind. Don't sing when As I'm singing. As if we're supposed to know. What is the name of the song? What is the name of the song? Do you not know I it? Can't, I can't Pretty think Pretty Maids it. All in a Row. There you go. Uh, Pretty Maids All in a Row. We're done. And then you got what? New Kid in Town. We might as well do the long run while we're here. Um, The long run. Uh, King of Hollywood. Disco Strangler. I can't tell you why. Uh, teenage Jail. The Long Run. I thought you said that already. Uh, the Greeks Don't Want No Freaks. Heartache Tonight. Those Shoes. There you go. We did it. We didn't do... Uh, did we say I Can't Tell You Why? Yeah, I said Did we it. say The Sad Cafe? Yeah, I got it. Sad Cafe. One of my f ten favorite Eagles songs. It's a beautiful song. David Sanborn on the and that album alto sax. for all the bickering that went into it and uh, that group was falling apart while they were making that album. That's a great album. It's good. No, it's great. It's got Teenage Jail on it. It can't be great. Teenage Jail is you, you just got to laugh at it. It's horrible. I try to like it, but I just uh, it's not. Quite I don't know. There they, for me. I don't know what got into them for Teenage Jail. But anyway, 
Uh, is anybody called uh, to comment on your voice? Well, I mean, I, there might be a talent scout. This out is there. arguably the worst segment in the history of this show. It could be this. I, I, you know, Andrew's back in the studio, and he doesn't hear this show every day. I'm sure he's got he an opinion right now. He's thinking to himself, either you know these guys are pretty entertaining, or he's not listening. That's Much probably the way it. Max does. Max doesn't listen. Or he's thinking to himself, my God, when's this two weeks up? Now, only he has the answer to that. But aren't you a little curious? Well, I'm sure he's trying to get through this show first. When are these two hours up? And he's counting down the minutes. He's, he's got to be thinking a little bit about, mm, Max, next time you're out, you'll need to. Well, he's getting paid, right? Yeah, he's what getting paid. does he paid. care? And he seems to be listening every time I reach out to him. He responds. I wonder what his uh, main source of income is. Well, it's none of our business. It isn't, but I still wonder. He wonders what yours is. Channel 12. Thank well, you. I don't, I don't know if that's a main source. It's my main source. I don't source. know if you can qualify that as a main source. Well, it's my main source, so it's qualified. I guess. If you're willing to go there. But we get paid a ton to do this show. Yeah, this is quite just close second. All right, there you go. That's the game. Jeff didn't do a very good job today. It was going to be a fun game if Max was here. Not really. He could only name one song off of Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, <laughs> and it was Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Do you know Band. how many years it's been? Magical Mystery Tour. That was another album. The Beatles no. had 700 What did it albums. go into right after Sgt. Pepper? I don't know. What did it go into? It goes right into the next song. What is it? What would you think if I sang okay. out of tune? Yeah, that's terrible. Would you stand up and walk out on me? God, what are you, what are you up singing and... the opera? Yeah, I am this time. That's a terrible rendition. Lend me your ears and I'll sing you a song. Oh, God. Uh, you know, I never thought and Ringo was a great not singer. To sing out of but he's key. so much better than you. Ooh, we get... that's I all. Should, I should take us to break with that. Tomorrow, Mike Furches will be with us. We're looking at doing some other things as well. Uh, attempting. Like what? Attempting to get some people. You don't need to worry about it. Or well, or you could get a guess. I'll think about it. Which would be great. Um, I'll think about what, it, what I might do. Uh, Wednesday's show, Wide Open. We have reached out to see if we can get a, a, someone of note. We, so we didn't reach out to that person. That person uh, has to go through somebody else, right? Maybe. I just, I just, I've hit two walls today. One happened at about one fifteen, and another one happened kind of during that last segment. Well, you you created the wall. How so? In that last segment, with a game that just didn't rise to the expectation of our listening audience. No, it's not that. I feel kind of dehydrated, maybe. What well, did you get? A, did you get a water? I drank this water. I had two big cups of water at work. I don't know what what's going on. Got my like sinuses are acting up in my head maybe. Or that you could, got wind surge duty tonight? Hydration. Yes, of course. Well, that could uh, be a problem. Nah, for I'm you. gonna go take a little quick siesta at home, and you're I'll gonna be drive fine. all the way home. Yeah, I'm not gonna sit in the press box for three hours. You know, there were times during the NBC World Series back in the day. Back when I covered it, and they had the nicer uh, press box over at Lawrence Dumont Stadium, uh, they, they, they gave me uh, the opportunity to, in the middle of the day after uh, some of the morning games were played, to go over into one of the suites and lay down and take a little nap. That would be beautiful. I would love to do that. Well, they let me do it. I wish I could do that. Well, they don't want you in one of those suites. Exactly. That's why I haven't. But they, they what I'm, my point is, they let me do it. Very nice. Those were not. Those were pretty nice suites back in the day. They were. They, they were, were terrible. Very cool. Exactly. Had the TVs uh, in there. The, and I, you know, took a little hour nap and was ready to go for the the evening session. Wonderful. I'm gonna go home though. Got to feed the cats. Got to hang out with the cats. We locked them up last night, so they might be upset. Those were fun days covering the NBC in those in those times, 70s, 80s, 90s. That's cool. What do you have to say about it? Nothing.
Well, I don't know why not. Nothing really. I, I looked up when uh, we had Vahe on and he was talking about this MVP battle in the American League. Is Gunnar Henderson out of it? Yeah, it's a two man race. Well, why aren't these. It's a two man race in the I National League. Aaron too. Judge homerless for 13 games. Yeah, but the narrative has kind of already been told, and Gunnar Henderson isn't really a part of it. Now, if he goes off and just is insane, hits 800, I still don't think he's going to win it, but he might be able to put his name back in the conversation. Bobby Witt, tremendous season, no, but, no doubt. Great, great, great player. Eight for 40. Have most of those outs been on the road? Well, I don't know. What, what, what am I? I don't know. I was just asking. Uh, and in the National League, it's really a two-man race. Well, Shohei, it, Shohei v. Lindor. Is it? That's what everybody's telling me. What about uh, Jose Ramirez <laughs> in the American Let's League? Let's be serious. What about uh, Cattell Marte or Marcelo Zuna? Cattell Marte's been hurt, and Marcel, no. He's had a nice year. But... Well, I don't see uh, It's a slam dunk for Shohei Otani. Uh, so Dude. Th- He's going to be a 50-50 gonna, guy. Some people are going to vote against him because he doesn't play defense. You know what those people are? Morons, we used to call them. And Francisco Lindor plays a solid shortstop. I don't, I, that's all fine and good. And for a contending team. If you team, become the first 50-50 player in the history of baseball, it's a slam dunk. How much money do you want? I'll give you 100 to 1. Okay. For a thousand. No, okay. So I win. You win a hundred thousand. If Francisco no, Lindor. Let's do it for ten, and I'll win a thousand. Then you can pay me. If it's Lindor. No, I can pay a hundred thousand. <laughs> I'll take everything you own. That might require a trip to the bank. I don't know that I have that. Uh, it might in take, my wallet. It might take a handgun too. If you're. No. No. And I'm not. I'm not condoning. Yeah, I don't know where that bank came robbery, from. but you don't have. Do you want to do it or not? Yeah, I do. A thousand dollars. No, for a, for ten. One hundred to one. Probably not. There you go. You backed off. You backed off. What do you mean I backed? I said off. do it. Let's do it for ten. That's not enough money. That doesn't get me to the Fine, table. Let's do it for fifty. All right. So I win fifty thousand. Right. That's a lot of money. That's good. You good? Yeah, but you already owe me tens of thousands of dollars. Are you good? From bets that we've made. $50, Shohei Otani. $20. No. $20,000. $20,000 will cover a lot of stuff for me. You just said fifty. Twenty-five. dollars Now suddenly I'm hitting the wall. I just got really hot. Is it hot? It is hot in here, yes. Well, I turned the AC down. I felt comfortable until just now. I don't know what the deal is. So we're getting some... Outside air coming in? I don't think so. I don't think so. Pretty this well place insulated. Is, this place is well insulated. And uh, it's not like uncomfortably hot. It's just like a warmth. Yeah, that, but I didn't notice that it until blankets over you somehow. One minute ago. Now I'm kind of seated under the air. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either. It's tough. But, uh, at this time of the year, these temperatures can be all over the place. I went outside this morning. It's beautiful. And it was just, un- I almost felt like I needed a jacket. You did need a jacket this morning. It was in the 50s. That felt so good. I agree. Why does it still have to be 90 in the we second this, week of September? We get this little uh, strange weather pattern always. Uh, we never know what it's going to do. It's currently 87 degrees. Now, according to the forecast, uh, let's see here. We are due for 89, 88, 89, 90, 92, 89, 91. Sickening. 91, 91, 88, 85, 85, 84, 84 Good. over the next 15 days. I hate that. That's too hot. Would you be interested in a, in a no. pilot who uh, grounded his plane in Wichita on 9-11? What for, now? Would you be interested in a pilot who grounded his plane in Wichita on 9-11? Yeah, we could do that. I don't have his number in my phone anymore, uh, but I may have sent it out in a work email, so it might be in my sent item. We'll see. I I might be able to find it. I don't know his name. Tomorrow, of course, uh, 9-11, and uh, 23 years ago, 
uh, never forget it, obviously, for many reasons. One of those reasons is that I was doing the radio show that day with Jared Bartlett, and uh, you were in the other room taking phone calls and quote unquote producing, I was producing the, show. the show. I, Which is I was the most... in your I was in your ear with lots of stuff to say. Jared looked over a, a lot of times. Which is the loosest During definition the of that of show and said, Jeff, what do I say here? I've ever heard. And I helped him. Um that's what producers do. You know what producers do in in the real world? Not really. They put the show together. Yeah, they kind of write it. And the and the talent and they, i.e., me, they do the segment. Come in and we just read off the screen. Well, that's what and, Jim Rome uh, does. And I get a guest, and and we go to town, and and everything's good. You know why Jim Rome? You know does what that? Jim Rome couldn't do? What I do? Yeah, he just did that for years and years, and made himself the best at it. So he can now just show up, kind of with every. But I think he still does a lot of work. You think he writes some of that stuff? Uh, no, but this off-the-cuff stuff he's still really good at, interacting with callers, and he's still good at that stuff. Well, I can interact with callers. You heard me with, uh, uh, what's his name? Yeah, with poor Mark. Yeah, Mark who, earlier. Very misguided sense of who has knowledge on this show. That was a great way to go, though, because he said I got a question. Well, I, who's your question for, Mark? And it was... It ended on up the walls there. Nail marks. Okay, everything good. Everything's good. I just get distracted sometimes. Fine. I looked over there and I saw something. I didn't quite know what it was. Yeah, it's just uh, nail marks. Apparently, we built this little room here at the Leslie Rudd Learning Center so that we could do this radio show here, and uh, we'll be back here tomorrow. In fact, I like it. Uh, and then Thursday we've got the three-man booth. Uh, with Jason Duda. We need to mix uh, the big fella in for a three-man booth sometime. Could happen. I think I might do that for Friday. Really? Yeah. We'll see if he's uh, available. All right. Do what you got to do. Uh, I'm getting a little bit... What? What's the right word? Tired of me? <laughs> getting a little bit uh, been there, done that uh, with you, although... With me? There's no one I'd rather do a radio show with. Uh, that, yeah, you better say that. Absolutely not. You want me to take us out with uh, Magical Mystery? No, I don't. I don't really. There's not really words to that song. Andrew ah! uh, Andrew Fry with another stellar job back in the studio producing and engineering. We'll be back tomorrow, everyone. Have a good day. It's better over here. AT&T customers, switching to T-Mobile has never been easier. We'll pay off your existing phone and give you a new one free, all on America's largest 5G network. Visit T-Mobile.com slash carrier freedom to switch today. Pay off up to $650 via virtual prepaid MasterCard in 15 days. Free phone up to $830 via 24 monthly bill credits plus tax. Qualifying port and trade-in service on Go 5G next and credit required. Contact us before canceling entire account to continue bill credits or credit stop and balance and required finance agreement is due. It's a great day to venture out in a spacious and capable Toyota SUV. Like the new RAV4. With available all-wheel drive, it can go just about anywhere. And with plenty of passenger and cargo space, you'll go from morning carpool to weekend road trip without missing a beat. Plus, with available features like wireless charging and a touchscreen interface, your Toyota RAV4 will keep you connected no matter where you're going. Or check out a spacious Highlander. With seating for up to eight, it's a hub for family adventure. You'll drive in comfort and style with available heated and ventilated seats and all the latest tech. And with available hybrid models, your new Highlander can save you tons on gas. Right now, your local Toyota dealer has more vehicles in stock and is making delivery on new vehicles almost every day. So don't wait. Buy a RAV4 or Highlander today. Visit buyatoyota.com for deals and more. Toyota, let's go places.